Environmental issues should of course be a major concern for those building PV facilities. As the impacts of pollution and climate change have become more apparent around the world, there's a much greater sensitivity to the environmental impacts of energy generation and man's activities in general. The ISO 14001 Environmental Certification provides companies with an opportunity to take a systematic and progressive approach to environmental protection and to show that commitment to others. Every solar power company should develop coherent and progressive policies on protection of the environment. ISO 14001 defines what it means by terms such as environmental aspects, environmental impacts and residues and these definitions are important and you should take account of them during the execution as well as the planning of your project. Environmental uh, management is an important element in the construction phase as well as the operation of the solar plant. An individual environmental analysis of every project will be required. To develop good environmental management, you should know the legislative and environmental aspects that concern your business and evaluate the impacts of your activities on the environment. You will need to identify indicators to measure those impacts and use those indicators to develop preventive and corrective actions. An emergency plan is important so that you can minimise the environmental impacts of any accident or incident and there should be good management policies and practices to deal with residues. The top table on this slide is an example list of the environmental aspects or types of a solar installation and the potential impacts on the environment. A fire may cause atmospheric pollution and it would have environmental impacts on the flora and fauna. Fire is an extraordinary event while electricity consumption is normal. Whether the event is classed as the normality or extraordinary, you should consider its potential impacts and design systems to eliminate or minimise those impacts. The second table is an example of an analysis of fire in the emergency classification. Each type of emergency is scored according to the probability that it will create environmental impacts and the seriousness of those impacts. By multiplying scores for probability by the score for seriousness, you'll establish a significant score that will help you establish your management priorities. And here's a different environmental management classification of normal aspects in a solar project. This table uses seriousness plus consequences multiplied by frequency to generate an assessment score. In the example, noise is a not very serious environmental impact. The consequence is not high, but the frequency is high. In establishing your environmental priorities, an assessment score for noise of 6 means it's not significant, while paper consumption with an assessment score of 15 is significant. And here's an emergency plan for every potential incident in our facility. Having one is important. The table contains an emergency plan in case of fire. In this emergency plan, the frequency of practice is defined, which is annually. Then the practice that should be done annually is defined, and we define which tasks should be done. But as well as defining responsibilities and actions in the case of fire, the plan also defines preventive measures to be taken. In managing the disposal of residues from the construction and operation of the plant, it's important to know the quantities you are likely to have to deal with and the types of residue. And here we can find a list of residues divided into normal and dangerous. In planning a response, there are many companies that can help with the disposal of dangerous residues.